very very simple very very basic topic and today we will be discussing about the four fundamental states of matter now you already uh, might know about the uh, three states of matter the first three states the four state that we will be talking about today is known as plasma these three states you might already know so this is the solid state this is the liquid state and this is the gaseous state okay so solid liquid and gas are the three uh, things three states of matter that we see in everyday life plasma also occurs quite frequently on earth and we'll see how to actually create plasma one of the things that we need in order to go from solid to liquid to gas as we go in this direction we are giving increasing and increasing energy okay so energy of the particles is increasing because we are giving them more and more energy and, and typically this energy is given in the form of temperature so we are increasing the temperature as we increase the temperature the same material would first go from solid to liquid then from liquid to gas and finally from gas to uh, plasma if we increase the temperature furthermore okay then next thing is that as we go from solid liquid gas to to plasma the amount of randomness actually increases so in the case of solid the the particles were actually moving very very uh, they were at, at the same location and they were just vibrating in, in standing in one location in the case of liquid all the particles are close together they are not very very far uh, apart uh, they have little bit of freedom to move around okay so they can move around uh, within their uh, volume okay they are not tied to one location if you will okay but they are still very close to each other uh, in the case of gas the the particles uh, can be very far from from each other they can move very far from each other depending upon how much volume the gas is occupying and of course the uh, the the particles can actually uh, go quite a bit more okay they can travel quite a bit more they are allowed to to do that uh, in the case of plasma the the atoms and molecules uh, composing the particular matter uh, the the atoms and molecules themselves are broken down okay so we'll study what what happens here in, in a little bit but the randomness is actually of the plasma is uh, more than that of the the gas now let's look at each of these states in a little bit of detail and then look at their properties okay so this is very very important in for your olympiad a question you can expect from this particular uh, the chapter okay one or two questions very very simple questions provided you you don't get confused you look at these things very very closely so the first thing is that in the case of solid the separation between particles is actually very very small okay it's, it's in a, it's an order of a, a few atomic radii okay it's, or, or the molecular radii is is along those uh, of, of that order uh, the kinetic energy of these individual particles composing the solid is very very less they are only little bit of vibration they are at the same place they are standing there doing little bit of vibration that's what that's all they can that's all they are allowed to do and forces between the particles is of course are of course which are holding them together are very very strong and that is why they cannot move very far from each other they are not allowed to to move now what about shape and volume so because the the particles are held together very very tightly a solid has a fixed shape and a fixed volume and solid because of that reason is not compressible either so solids are typically not very uh, compressible and the density of the solid is also higher of course there are exception to this density rule uh, for example in the case of water but typically the density is uh, except for some exceptions the density of a solid is higher than the corresponding liquid now another important property a very important property of the solid is uh, that uh, they are uh, the, the solids the particles when they are arranged inside the solid for example this is a, a, a crystal of nacl so here we can clearly see the sodium and the chlorine okay so this is sodium and this is chlorine and they are arranged very nicely uh, right in, in a very nice fashion all throughout the crystal it, they will exhibit this nice arrangement okay so so see how when we are traveling in a car how we are able to see the the trees in the field okay if they are planted nicely they appear in the same line so what do we say we say that uh, when the trees are planted in that nice fashion so that we can see uh, them in, in lines they have long range order okay so similarly the, the solids they have long range order and uh, of course if you go a little bit into details of individual solids then we say that the solids are actually of three types one is the crystalline solid 
uh, and polycrystalline solid and amorphous solid. So crystalline solids are the ones which exhibit this uh, long range order. The, the, the particles are arranged orderly in orderly fashion for very very long distances. Okay, I mean long distances in terms of the molecules and atoms, the size of molecules and atoms. Okay, a polycrystalline solids means that they have order, but they are not formed of a single crystal. They are made up of many, many crystals. For example, ice is uh, made up of, it can have as many as, uh, composed of as many as 15 crystals, 15 different types of crystals. But each individual crystal has, exhibits this long range order. Uh, and then finally, the third kind of solids that we have is the amorphous solids. Now, amorphous solids don't exhibit this order. But they still have properties of solids in the sense that their atoms cannot really move very very far away they are not free to travel they are still uh, they have force into their uh, place and they can only do a little bit of vibration okay so that is a very very important property of the crystalline solids that is that they exhibit long range order now here the diagram that i have shown here is actually uh, a single crystal of silicon this is a single crystal of silicon without any defects okay it is it is just the silicon nicely arranged uh, in, in this fashion, in, in this long range uh, order. So that is the important thing here. Another important thing to remember is that metals uh, typically are always arranged in this nice crystalline fashion, which means that they have uh, the long range order. They are, they are crystalline solids. But there can be some metals, uh, metallic uh, alloys, okay, not, not metals themselves, but some alloys of metals which can be amorphous okay so alloys of metal can be amorphous but metals are always themselves are always crystalline so again very very important concepts from the point of view of of, of olympia now what about the the liquids see the thing is the solids as we increase their temperature so here we are adding the heat to the solid and as we he add add heat to the solid at for example in this case we have taken ice at zero degree celsius the ice starts converting into water now until all the ice is converted into water the temperature of this particular uh, solid or uh, this ice would not really increase so proportion of water would continue to increase as we heat add more and more heat but the temperature would remain constant okay and similarly after after this if we further heat the water then we will reach a point where the water would start converted in converting into gas but until all the water is converted into steam okay so water uh, the, the gas of water is known as steam until all the water is converted into steam the temperature will not really increase it will be stuck at 100 degree celsius so that is what has been shown in this diagram now what about the properties of this liquid see the separation between the particles is again the order of the the size of the uh, the, liquid, the, the particles that are compo composing the liquid, that are making up the liquid. That is still the case. But the particles are not stuck in one position. They are free to move around. So they can go around, they can move. Okay. Uh, that is the thing here. Now, of course, because the particles are more, have more freedom, uh, they definitely have more kinetic energy. We can say that. And uh, also the, the forces between the particles in the case of liquids, they are less. Interparticle forces are are less and that is what allows them it is because of their higher kinetic energy uh, they are not completely bound by those uh, forces now what about shape and volume so liquid we already know that liquid can take uh, any shape that we we want it to if we put, pour it in a square container it will become a square if you pour it in a uh, in a cylindrical container for example a glass it will become a uh, it will take the shape of the container and become uh, cylindrical Okay, so shape is not definite, but the liquids typically have uh, almost constant volume. Okay, so they do not change their volume. Uh, even if we apply more pressure to the liquid, the changing the volume of the liquid itself is hard. They only do only very small uh, changes, even even at pressure. Okay, so the volume of the liquid is constant. We can say. And for, for most cases, except for the water, the volume is typically of the liquid is typically more than that of the corresponding solid from which the liquid was heated and uh, made. Now, what about compressibility? See, the compressibility of the liquid we already say is, is nearly, they are nearly incompressible. If you push, if you apply a lot of pressure, then we can probably produce a very small compression even in the case of liquid. And of course, uh, their density. Uh, we said that density is usually higher than that of uh, higher than that of the respective gas, but lower than that of respective solid. 
Now another important property of the liquids and this is of course uh, important from the Olympiad point of view is this critical temperature. Now what is critical temperature? Critical temperature means that if I heat the liquid to this temperature, okay, then the all the liquid uh, will be converted into gas first of all and second no matter how much I try to compress that gas, how much I try to push that gas back into liquid I cannot do it okay so a gas at the critical temperature would only remain as the gas no matter how much pressure I apply to it I can never convert it back into the liquid typically for temperatures less than the critical temperature if I apply pressure to the gas I can transform it back into uh, liquid at even uh, uh, even the same temperature I can transform it back into liquid just by applying more and more pressure but at critical temperature and above critical temperature I cannot do that I cannot just uh, compress the gas to the liquid I will have to lower the temperature as well now what about the gas now this is the third state of matter gas and the separation between the particles is much much larger in the case of gas this, uh, the particles are very very far apart in, in fact uh, it depends the separation between the particle depends upon the volume of the container so I have this large uh, room here okay and if I leave only two molecules of helium gas for example in this room then they will be traveling all across this room okay so they will uh, in some sense fill out the complete room okay that is what it means they are not bounded so the distance is very very large and it is only uh, limited by the size of the container in which I have kept the gas. What about kinetic energy? The forces between the molecules is actually or the particles is are actually negligible. In the in fact, we assume for doing our calculations that they are zero, and we call such gases uh, ideal gases. What about kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is by definition because they are traveling so much. Okay, the kinetic energy is large. Uh, now the gases do not have shape, any shape or any volume so they take the, the entire they fill up the entire volume of the container and they take the shape of the container as well compressibility see the gases are very very compressible so if i take for example those two two molecules of the the gas that i have uh, of the helium gas that i have actually thrown i have I've just uh, um, that, 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 that have escaped in this room if I were to collect it and I want to put it in a in a glass in, in, in my in my fist if I want to put it I can do that even okay so the, the the gases are very very compressible I can make the size of my container small and small and small and the gas would become small and small and uh, would, would actually uh, occupy ever smaller volume and hence it's very very compressible density is typically of, of the gas is uh, less than that of the liquid but of course density varies why does it vary it depends upon the size of the container that's why it changes okay now there is an important thing here there is a two things which is vapor and a gas so we have taken a separate class on this to explain the differences but in very very simple terms a vapor is formed from the liquid so if i have the liquid water and i am forming uh, and it is being converted into uh, the uh, steam okay or it is converted into uh, water vapor okay then i can say say that this the, the vapor exists together with the liquid so with the liquid water the water vapor would actually exist if above the critical temperature if i have water uh, uh, in the gaseous form if i have the gas of water then i cannot call it water vapor above the critical temperature we only have gaseous water we cannot have water vapor so water vapor can exist only if uh, at the same temperature liquid water can also exist okay so that is the difference between vapor and uh, gas uh, only below the critical temperature i can call the gas to be a vapor because at the same temperature uh, of course with different pressure liquid can, liquid can also exist okay so that is why that is the important thing here Another important thing from the Olympiad perspective is that there are only two liquids, two elements, two basic elements, okay, not compounds, we are not talking about compounds, two basic elements, there are only two basic elements which are liquid at the normal pressure, normal one atmospheric pressure and those are mercury and bromine, those are the only two liquids elemental liquids which exist at normal atmospheric pressure, so very very important, okay. Uh, 
very very uh, normal atmospheric pressure and temperature normal conditions okay so now with this we move on to the third uh, sorry the fourth and the most uh, again very very important uh, state of matter which is plasma see i have already made the gas now from that gas if i want to convert that uh, that gas if i further uh, apply energy to that gas then what would happen each of the particle of the gas is made up of a nucleus okay so there is a nucleus at the center and around this nucleus is a are revolving electrons so if i supply enough energy a lot of energy to this individual atoms of the gas then slowly and gradually these electrons are torn away from the nucleus and they become free of the nucleus so in such a circumstance the nucleus would move differently will will just uh, go along in their uh, own direction and the electrons would uh, go in their own direction they would move away separately so such a charged gas such a charged uh, um, matter is known as a plasma so like the gas a plasma does does not have any definite shape or volume it occupies the entire space but unlike gases the individual particles of the plasma are charged either they they are positively charged nucleuses or they are negatively charged electrons but because of these charged part particles the plasma can actually conduct electricity okay? and that is it has it it and it it also exhibits uh, certain properties with respect to uh, magnetism and electricity it is able to conduct but also exhibit the magnetic and uh, electric other properties now now like i said that we if we apply more and more energy to this uh, atom then we can convert it into plasma uh, the how do we do that okay there are two methods one is applying heat as happens in the case of sun so sun is very very energetic uh, plasma that is uh, sun has very very energetic plasma that is uh, sort of giving out all those radiation from the sun that we see all that light from the sun that we see okay that is what happens in the case of stars very very high temperature another method to actually generate plasma from the gas is to pass electricity through it and that is what happens in the case of olden days uh, tube light uh, that we used to have even in the case when there is lightning uh, in the in the clouds or when the lightning comes to to ground then the plasma is created in the air and of course that is because of the electric discharge uh, through the air now this particular state of matter is not uh, commonly we do not hear about it the plasma it's a fundamental state so it's very very important first of all from your from your perspective of exam but another thing is that it is although it is not commonly occurring we don't normally uh, for example we don't drink plasma we normally drink liquid okay and we don't inhale plasma we inhale gases okay it's not that common but this this plasma still occurs uh, in uh, common phenomena on earth so again very 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 important from your point of view of exam so hopefully all of this is is clear if you have doubts or questions uh, definitely do put up in the comment section we will be happy to answer those to practice the olympiad problems head head over to doorstepputer.com where we have uh, several science olympiad problems uh, that you can practice with thank you